Hello everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Rust Electricity for Beginners. My name is Ozzy, and today we're going to start building some simple circuits, starting with a daylight sensor with a switch. So, say I've got my nice little starter base here, I've got an airlock, some metal doors, I'm feeling good and I want to add some creature comforts. Well, if you've got a tier 1 workbench, if you go over here to the right side, you can find the electricity. In today's episode, we're going to mention the switch, the small battery, the solar panel, the electrical branch, the blocker, ceiling light, and the electric heater. Now, I'll also have a schematic up on the video that you can see how this works from Restrition. Restrition's an amazing website that lets you kind of plan out your electrical circuits. I'll drop the link to that down below in the description as well. So. I know I want power, and I don't have access to the generator or the windmill yet, so we're going to use a solar panel. And I know I want this power available at night, and since the solar panel won't produce power at night, I know I'm going to need a battery, so we're going to grab one of those too. Now the cool thing about a small battery is you can place it a lot of places, such as on a uh, large box, on your tool cupboard, a workbench, even a couple places. So I'm going to put this on the workbench, because if I get raided and they don't you know, grief my base or something, maybe I can keep the electricity. Who knows? So I've got my battery there, we're going to close our doors as we come out because we're safe electricians. And I'm going to put a little jump up here so that I can get to my roof. You'll see a lot of people sometimes putting solar panels on the ground, and that's fine if you don't want to get on your roof. I just found that uh, putting on the roof means it's a little bit harder to grief. So if I put this here, I can check the output, and that's only giving me two right in the middle of the day, so uh, we should probably turn this around. Now the nice thing is now solar panels no longer take durability damage when you pick them up, which means I can arrange this however many times I want without having to worry about it. You'll also see people tell you, you know, hey, based on where you build, if you're in the northern southern hemisphere, you should base your panels to the north or the south or whatever. What I like to do is kind of figure out where the sun is in the morning. I've seen it in the morning over here, and at night I saw it kind of over here, and then I'm just going to kind of do that. I know I'm going to expand my base later, and I'm going to have to move my solar panels anyways, so I'm not super particular about it right now. Now, I recommend being careful with your wiring, because if I just pull this all the way over here where I know my battery is going to be, people can figure out that that's where my power is coming from. It's probably not going to matter for this little starter base, but if I start putting base defense stuff like auto turrets or Teslas in, and people know where my power is, they can take my power out first and get around my defenses. So what I recommend is trying to hide your power as best as possible, or be deceitful with it. Either way is fine. We're going to close our outside door before our inside door because we're safe electricians. And as you come down here, you can kind of go circular a little bit to figure out what's uh, right under that solar panel if you like being really clean with your wires like I do. Uh, but it's your base. Do what you want. So I've got, a, I've got a solar panel connected to my battery now. If you look at the capacity, you'll see it's going up. I am successfully charging a battery. So I want lights, and maybe I'm in the Arctic, so I want a heater. So I'm gonna plug in my lights, I'm gonna plug in my heater, or just stick it over here on the side, I guess. And um, I'll just plug those into the, the battery, and we have lights. And because of this pass-through node on the lights, I can actually just take that power directly to the heater and have heat. And you know, with not a whole lot of effort or many parts, we've got light and we've got heat in our base, which is awesome. Now the light takes up two power, the heat takes up three, so I've got five active usage on this battery. So I've got 20 power coming in from the solar panel, at least during the height of the sunlight, and I've got five power coming out, but at night it's going to be using five power with no power coming in. Well, if I don't need these lights during the day, because rust physics are weird and I have light in an entirely enclosed space, or if I'm in the desert and I only want the heater on at night, uh, I can save myself that 5 power drain by using a daylight sensor. Now, you can do that with a solar panel, an electrical branch, and a blocker. So, I'm going to take this branch and I'm going to run the power in back to that solar panel and I can just follow this wire along here to uh, keep my stuff neat. We're gonna close our doors because we're safe electricians. And 
jump up here, and if I hold right click on this node, it'll remove it from the battery. Left click to put the branch in, and that actually hides it really well, which is kind of nice. Go back inside, and then now I have that solar panel connected to this branch. Now the branch separates the power into these two nodes. So I've got the left node, I really only need one power for my daylight sensor. So I'm going to do that and this other 19 I'm going to send it back into the battery so it can keep charging. So then I'm going to put the power out of my battery into the power in on the blocker. I'm going to send the power from the blocker to the light. And now it looks like nothing's changed. The heater and the light are still active, it still draws 5 power. The only time the blocker really does anything is if you have power into this block pass-through node. So I'm going to take that one power from the solar panel, do that, and it, this green-red configuration essentially says, hey, we're not letting power through because there's power going into this left side. The way the electrical branch works is it prioritizes the left node. So as the sun starts to set and the solar panel produces less and less power, the very last one power that the solar panel produces will go through this left node. So it'll be pretty dark by the time this actually lets power pass through. If you want it to activate a little bit sooner, you can turn your solar panel a little bit, or you can use a separate solar panel for it. Um, there are a couple of different ways. So we have all of this set up. Our circuit is only available at night. But say I'm in the Arctic and I want the heater on all day and the lights on at night. Well, what I can do is I can run the power from the battery directly into the heater. so that the heater's always on, and then using the pass-through on the heater, I can then plug into the daylight sensor so that the lights are only on at night and the heater is on during the day. Now if I want to be even more efficient and only have this circuit running while I'm home, I can use a switch. Now the switch is kind of like the blocker, it doesn't allow stuff to pass through on certain conditions, but this one's a manual condition rather than a powered condition. So the way this works is instead of putting power into the heater, I would instead put power into the switch. And that red light means it's receiving power but not on. A green light will mean it's on. And then you see there's no power coming out and I turn it on. Now it has that power coming back out. I'm going to plug this into the heater. So now it does the same thing. The heater is on, the light is off. There's a daylight sensor on the light. And the switch tells the entire thing, turn off and save power if I'm not at my base. Now, an important note is raiders and people not authed on your TC can use switches and buttons. Uh, so be careful with that. But because these only control the lights, I'm not really concerned about it for this circuit. So that's all for this video. We're going to continue building in this base a little bit, showing you more circuits in the next one. Thank you all for watching. If you want to see more videos, hit that subscribe button. If this video helped you out at all or you want to support the channel, please hit that thumbs up. And I will see you all next time.